We live in a day of iconoclasm. Too often yesterday's heroes are today's villains. Statues of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and even Abraham Lincoln have been torn down or defaced in our day. But there is a reason previous generations of Americans have venerated the memory of our nation's founding fathers and great leaders. In the example of our first president, we see that he truly was a model Christian statesman when we review the facts of history. Here's a portion of our Providence Forum special on George Washington. One of the most important days in world history was the transition from George Washington as our first president under the Constitution to John Adams, the second president. That date, March 4, 1797, a transition of power in peace was significant in world history. Throughout history, there have often been bloody transitions from the first ruler to the second ruler because power is what people struggle over. But under the American Constitution, there was a stability there. Finally, George Washington could return in peace to his beloved Mount Vernon and enjoy life with his beloved wife and two adopted grandchildren. On December 12, 1799, George Washington went on a ride around his plantation in the cold. Soon, he caught pneumonia. Three doctors came to see him, including his longtime friend, Dr. James Crake. Two of the doctors thought he should be bled. Crake did not agree, but he was in the minority. Rather than cure Washington, he soon died. His final words were, tis well. When George Washington was finally laid to rest just days before the end of the 18th century, the whole nation mourned. Today at Mount Vernon, both Martha and George Washington lie in stone sarcophagi, together in life and together in death. Behind their heads, chiseled in stone, are words from Jesus in the Gospel of John in the King James Version, wherein Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And many remarked through the ages on what a truly great man he had been. If you speak of solid information and sound judgment, Washington is unquestionably the greatest man of them all, Patrick Henry. His qualities were so faultlessly proportioned that the whole people rather claimed him as its choicest representative, George Bancroft. His integrity was the most pure, his justice the most inflexible I have ever known. No motives of interest or consanguinity or of friendship or hatred being able to bias his decision, Thomas Jefferson. When we look at George Washington, we're clearly looking at the great icon of our country, the United States. He is the man who has given his name to our capital city. He was called the father of his country in his own lifetime. He has been called by historians the indispensable man. Every time this new country was being developed, they looked to Washington as a general, as a government thinker, as the first president. And he is extraordinarily important for America. So whatever his faith was then becomes important for us. George Washington was a model statesman and a model Christian. The Apostle Paul tells us that as Christians, we should give thanks to God in all circumstances. Washington reminded Americans that we as a nation have much to be grateful to God for. During the American War for Independence, he noticed God's help at key points along the way. After one such circumstance, he wrote to one of his military subordinates saying, quote, the hand of providence has been so conspicuous in all this that he must be worse than an infidel that lacks faith and more wicked that has not gratitude to acknowledge his obligations, end quote obligations of gratitude. In short, said George Washington, we Americans need to learn to thank God for what he has done for us. For Providence Forum, I'm Jerry Newcomb.